What are the casualties, Dave? Losses for Germany, 7.3 mil. Soviets have lost 5.1. My losses, 42. Hey, I am Feedback Gaming. And this is Hearts of Iron 4, again. This is the game where you mess up history. You go in with the intention of playing historical, and then you make a pig's ear of it. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. You guys seem to love my 30 minutes of hell video. So let's do another one, another achievement. United States, 936, historical on, regular difficulty. Let's go. The achievement we're going for today is Team America, drop a nuke on Paris. This is not an achievement most people have got already. So let's get this one in the bank. A few people are gonna ask me like, Dave, why have you got no achievements? What's going on? I don't play Iron Man, it's not my thing, okay? Oh, just give me a rest, okay? This wouldn't be a feedback gaming video unless I abuse the game, right? We're gonna do instant conversion. We're gonna make a death stack Navy. That's right, in man the guns, death stack Navy. And we're gonna primarily focus on air and Navy. Forget ground forces, this battle can be won in the sky. Are you ready? Are you sat down? You have a lovely, delicious, warm beverage in your hand? I recommend coffee. A lovely cup of decaf. You drinking tea? Get out of here! This is not your channel, you come to the wrong place here. Have you hit the like button? Dying out in Hearts of Iron 4 is always tricky, so I like to show the initial start. So work from left to right with your notifications. We're going to work initially on electronics because we want to research nuclear tech as quick as we can. We're also going to work on our production to get our economy rolling up and going. And we're going to go for something we've never done before. We are going to go for the air doctrine of strategic destruction. <gasps> what? I know. Next up. We have civilian factories. We're going to place civvies in the areas of the map which have the highest infrastructure. Uh, a little bit of artillery is nice though. And we need to carry our planes desperately. And we are also going to make naval bombers. Perfect. We're going to be lend lease in China. So what we're going to do is add a few more there and a few more there. Let's switch this around. Let's have a look. Here's a little good hotkey for you. Hold shift and left click on the category. And it'll only show you that one category. It's really useful for sorting. There's a few ships we've got in progress here. Uh, as long as there's just one more ship they're producing, I'm completely happy with that. So let's finish off the existing ships because a lot of them are partially constructed anyway. There we go. Okay, next up, national focus. Three parts of the focus for your USA is your political stuff on the left. You've got your invasion stuff in the center and you've got your research boosts for your land, navy and air here. Now these are pretty good, but we'll come back to them later. We're gonna continue the new deal first. Finally, we have insufficient resources, which is a little bit of rubber and a little bit of chromium. Not a big deal. Let's go five speed and let's start. While the game is running, we can merge up our navies, hold shift, left click on each of the fleets, right click on the reserve, enter, press G to merge them all. Creating a powerful navy as USA is easy. If you want to see more of a challenge, how about you check out my Norway, Sweden naval guide here and here. Now you want to merge up your air wings. There's two ways of doing this. You can go F3 and select them on the map and move them. But you can't zoom out too far because they disappear. So a good way of doing it is click on this tab and just hold shift flip, left click on all the air wings that aren't naval ones. Aren't the ones that are positioned on carriers, aka all of these. And you can right click here and move them here. We've got our merge super fleet here. And we are going to exercise it because we need lots of naval XP. And we'll do the same for our air wings as well. We'll make them into relatively decent stacks. And then we'll air exercise them as well. Even though the air base is overfilled, they can still exercise. Explain that one. Hmm? Next up, we're going to go for the historical path for America, which is the Neutrality Act. It reduces war support, uh, but it gives lots of political power. And it gives access to the Manhattan Project. And we're going to need that for the research. Right, we need to work on radio and we need electronics. So we're going to have to go down both. We'll start off with mechanical computing to begin with. Right, industry, we're going to go for disperse industry. Okay, next up, we're going to go for Arsenal of Democracy. Right, we've filled our oil supplies again, so stop exercising the air wings because they're all level 3 anyway. We've got a few extra of ships, so we'll merge those in, and then we'll start exercising. Let's work on our air force. We are going to need to research heavy fire. Heavy fire is great because they've got additional range as well as additional air attack. They end up being good escorts to accompany strategic bombers, but they also tend up being really good at shooting down strategic bombers as well. They seem to do both. Uh, they tend to be not as good as fighters in dogfights. All right, next we're going to go for WPA and then go for the Agricultural Adjustment Act, which reduces the effects of Great Depression. All right, so this is what you do with this. Naval exercises, you keep performing the exercises until you run out of fuel completely. And then when you run out of fuel, you turn off the exercises, build up the oil reserves again, and then activate. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. With the election event, it is tempted to go for the extra political power. 
and the free standard oil of California. It's so tempting to do that, but just don't. Because a, if you change a president, you're unable to do a lot of decisions when uh, Germany goes to war. So I'd recommend continuing the New Deal. Okay, we're going to also research the B-17 Flying Fortress as well. Now we can start making heavy fires, which we'll do immediately. There we go. The lack of rubber is a 25% penalty. We'll deal with that for now. That's okay. And then we'll start making the first air wing. Hey, it's trivia time. How many people died in World War II? How many people died in the whole of World War II? If you know, comment below. Right, we've got uh, radar researching, and we're also going to focus on machine tools too. At this point, we've got two options. We can go for the research slots here and here, and we're eventually going to work on nukes. But right now, we're just going to grab one research slot, and then we'll start work working on the buffs for our Navy and Air Force are here. Cheaper fighters, cheaper bombers, and the option to go for the more advanced subs, as well as carriers, as well as cruisers. As well as capital ships. The most annoying thing in Hoi Foy is whenever you start with a carrier, it's never a fully loaded carrier. It's so frustrating. In this case, we're going to take off all these close air support because I just don't like close air support on planes. I've tried that, okay? I've tried it where I make a carrier with only close air support. I did it as Japan and it just does not work. There we go. We're just lacking a few naval bombers which we are working on. And as always, if you've got one division exercising to make that division as big as possible, means you'll grind as much XP, so we're going to max it out at 50 combat width. The new meta. Alright, next up, War Department. We are going to go for Trade Indiction. I'm going to spend 100 XP too to get it a boost quicker. Our Navy will consist of two things. Destroyers with max radar that are going to be able to detect to allow our capital ships to do lots of damage, and also really strong submarines that are going to basically intercept everything. So we're going to go for Sonar 2. Our Flying Fortress is now done. We'll produce just one, one factory on there, just to trickle in the production. Our first one will be done in eight years. Wow. Next up, we're going to get bigger torpedo tubes, which we can add on to our destroyers. Also, we're going to work on the next radar too. And that unlocks our first radar module we can add on to our ships. We're also going to have smoke generators. And then we'll work on depth charges. We also have the option to boost depth charges as well. I'd recommend it. Only 50 XP and it boosts by 100%. I don't understand this. I have the ability to go Lenly site right now. It won't let me. Comment below. I don't actually know why. All right, two ocean navy act. Let's go. All right. Next up, we need to go for science electronics. Next up, we're going to do bureau of ships, which gives XP and a slight cost reduction for all of the ships. All right. Next up, we're going to go for computer machine. Now we have access to fleet submarines, so we can rush sub three and sub four. All right, we've got the option to send an attaché to China, so we'll do that. This will grind XP for us, and it'll help out the Chinese a little bit. Right, ship designer. The winner here for ship designer is raiding fleet designer, and the reason you want to go for it is it gives extra speed to all of your ships, which results in more detection overall. All right, we've got the option now to go for Great Lakes, which puts us onto civilian economy. Let's start producing our submarines, our new ones. All right, we're going to go for Fair Labor Standard Axe, which reduces the impact of Great Depression once again. We also have the ability to jump straight up to partial mobilization. Now we're on civilian economy. I recommend you do that. And now we have lots and lots of factories. All right, next up, we don't need to produce any more guns or artillery, but we need to leave at least one factory in there just to keep up the slack if we do fall into our reserves. All right, we're going to go for now the Heavy Fighter Designer. Then we can start researching the next heavy fighter. A little bit ahead of time, but that's not a big deal. And then we can go for escort fires. I mean, the third one will be researched 300% faster. i am decided I'm going to rush Submarine 4 as well. 100% boost. I mean, it'll be done just over a year. Yeah, I'll do that. It's sad when I see this, but there's a technology here we need, and it's radar technology, but we need to get to these two first. So let's go for the carrier research that we're never going to use. At this point, we've got 202 civilian factories. That huge at this point importing a little bit of rubber from the uk will not hurt anything we have the option now to get rid of great depression by going for the federal housing act so let's do that when you're exercising your ships don't forget to repair them they're going to get really badly damaged look at the list of these subs that was on forever all right for the incident you want to demand compensation to get extra war support you could declare war early if you wanted to uh but the penalties are just crazy right we can rush the Lockheed XP-58 Chain Lightning now at 300%. So 
this is a 1944 plane and we'll get it early 1940 that's insane our economy is huge right now we're struggling to build enough factories be aware i've forgotten about dispersed industries so just keep going down here to build up get more building slots and you can continue to build more and more civvies. I can now go for the lend lease act. It doesn't actually say that as one of the requirements that Europe has to be at war, but it is. There you go, the more you know. Eh? We do war propaganda against Germany. I recommend you do it as soon as you can. Get that extra war support. That's really crucial for USA. We've got extra political power, so I recommend doing the refuge for the German and Italian scientists now as well. We've got a bunch of events now to help out the UK. It gives us more war support, so it's worth it. I've decided I'm going to go for a light cruiser. There's a few buffs in our doctrines allowed to get light cruiser extra surface detection. And that's the one we're going to go with. So the cruiser Mark II, big engine. We're going to go with the lightest armor. We're going to go with max sonar. We're going to go... Oh, sonar's on this side. You can't fit two sonars. Radar. Don't going to bother with the anti-air. And a light gun on the front. The spotter. This guy isn't for fighting. He's to spot and he's to run away and report what he's seen. This guy is going to assist and escort our death stack, which I'll show very shortly. I think we're going to make two lines of them just so we get enough of them to actually make a difference because otherwise they're just not going to make. That's perfect. That goes on the death stack. Aha! Here we go. So now we have the support China decisions and this gives them an extra three military factories and extra war support. The war support's almost maxed out. Now it is maxed out. Change. We can send them land lease now, so we're going to do exactly that. We'll send them 10,000 guns and 5,000 of artillery. Let's start working on the Manhattan Project. What we're going to do is train a bunch of basic infantry. All right, our super submarine has finished. The sub-4 is ready. So the sub-4 starts off with this model. Can fit bigger torpedoes though. It's torpedo fours and the max radar. Fat S Mark III. Right, these ships require chromium. And all the final tier ships, the smaller screens, do require chromium. So we're gonna pull in a lot of chromium from Cuba. Right, nuke tech. But before we have that national focus finished, we need to make sure we start atomic research the power of the atom i think i've just found a glitch that's full time that's full time and that's discounted and this one one in the middle seems to be not synced up with the time so you can rush this one okay all right well we'll do that right these are the three steps wartime industry check armaments organizer check and then finally Total mobilization. We can't do that because we need to be at war. But soon. The chain lightning has finished. So now, we can go for it with the biggest engine. Oh, almost. Almost. And we can kill the vast majority of these. There we go. Let's go. Okay. It is time to join the allies. And the UK is going to ask us to join the war. Yes. So this is something I've started to recently do. You select the air wing, particularly one that's got the most strength and experience. Set it to high priority, meaning when this one takes losses, the new built planes, only constructed ones, will go straight to this air wing. And also I assign the ace. So this means this air wing will, for the most part, if you've got the right production, will fight at its maximum effectiveness. All right, here we go. Total mobilization. Boom. Now, we have the ability to convert instantly. This is magic. Soon, 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 soon. And here we go. All the way to the top. Watch this, watch this. Unpause the game, space. Boom, done. Look at all these factories. Beautiful. All right, let's bring all of our air wings over to the UK and let's start harassing the uh, Germans. So you're probably thinking, what's this all about? Well, the routes around the world are either going to be through underneath Argentina here, underneath Cape of South Africa, or through the Suez Canal. I'm blocking the Suez, but I guess you can go through here and then go to Venezuela. 
And you could also go through the Panama Canal. That's not likely at the moment because I control it. But as you can see, that all routes now are blocked. There's no way they can get through. And we are going to be absolutely decimating their convoys. Rip. And rip. Right, we've got half our air wings now. We're going to send them to northern France. And uh, do a little bit of damage. But the idea right now is we just strike their air force and bring them into the northern France. The AI always falls for this bait. And that way you can dogfight them and just kind of work down the amount of planes they've got. And when they do choose to attack the Soviet Union, their navy, their air force will be weaker. Oh my damn. Goodbye, Dreadnought. Oh my damn. This is the power of really strong submarines. The torpedoes are so strong, they always engage. And they do some crazy damage. So right now, Germany is fully blockaded. And we're hitting them from every angle. Perfect. We're going to go for Rosie the Rocketeera, which is women in the workforce. So we get our manpower back. Once again, our economy is so big right now, we could just divert on anything we want to. So whenever I see some aluminium that I'm not building up, I instantly build the infrastructure. No big deal. Okay, there's 44 ships in the North Sea here. 32 in the Norwegian Sea too. So I'm going to bring my death stack over. And then we'll start engaging them from there. I'm not sure if there's a timer on this, but... Is the Flying Tigers around 1940? I thought they were a lot earlier. Never mind, okay. Uh, so we have the option now to send fighters to help out the Chinese. So I have to get rid of one of these fighter groups. I need to have some fighters in reserve to send to them. And then I activate it. Mexico would like to join the Allies. Sure, why not? We're having a little bit of trouble with uh, fuel right now. So I'm going to import a little bit from Venezuela. And a little bit from Mexico. And there we go. It's way better in this instance to, to stick on free trade and import over dropping my trade laws, which we will drop trade laws soon, but we need to get atomic research done first. Right, in this sea zone now, they've got 18 ships. Let's get rid of the rest of them. Is this a bug? But I seem to have the ability to go for these prospecting more than once. Does that mean I get double aluminium? I don't even know. All right, we're having a little bit of problem now. We can't cover the full region. So I'm going to take off our full regions and we get 100% again. Now we can intercept at full strength. Death stack has loads of chance due to all the surface detection to spot the enemy ships. Okay, we need to go for encryption and decryption so we get the most surface detection and sub detection. Engaging an enemy fleet here. And completely destroyed. Look at these convoys. So many destroyed. Another one. Another one. Another one. The, another one. This is like ASMR for me. I think the reason why there's so many convoys getting intercepted in the North Sea is because <clears throat> the Italians have invaded Scotland. Historical game, by the way. Whoa! What do we have here? These are our freights getting intercepted. We need to convoy escort here. Can we save them in time? Yes. Right, so there's two numbers here. When you hover over a sea zone, it says friendly supremacy and enemy suppressing. And underneath it says engage based on number of ships so you go here north sea it seems there's 12 ships and the enemy supremacy is 1411 so what you can do with this is figure out what ships are actually in these regions because each ship has an individual value screens as you imagine is a lower score where uh, capitals have a higher score as you can see in this case in the med here we've got 6000 this looks like a lot of screens though Let's see if we go here and see what we can find. Straight away, we detected a fleet, and it looks like a Vichy France fleet. Whoa! Okay, I blinked, and I uh, I sunk their fleet. <laughs> okay. Remember, these are all the ships from the very start of the game, remember? All I've done is give lots of passive bonuses. That's all I've done. I've just maxed out all these passive bonuses here and here. Let's have a look at the navies then. So Italy has 30 ships, and Germany has around about 20. So their fleets are both completely annihilated japan is justifying on us oh boy all right we can go for the super fortress now one year and we'll have the best strategic we've reached a point now where the navies are just completely decimated so what we'll do we'll go through the suez and see through there if we can uh, intercept some convoys hopefully we can and this will cut them off from africa and that way They'll never be able to get Africa back. At the minute, we're not winning these air battles. It's a bit of a back and forth, but we are kind of like pulling away a large number of their planes. So when they want to attack eastwards, 
They're going to find it more difficult to push against the Soviets. I didn't spot this, but the Republicans won the Civil War, so that means it's going to be East first West. Hitting a lot more convoys in the Mediterranean now. The Germans have stopped contesting us in the Northern France region. I think it's probably due to them using their air force in Iberia and Russia. So we're going to be adventurous now. We're going to start bombing them in the home territory. And they're just letting us bomb us. Okay. Got the ability to select a chief of navy too. We can go for the commerce raiding expert. Oh no, troop transports getting intercepted. They're moving from Denmark to Norway. Oh no. Those are the most devastating ones to lose. We all know the feel the pain of a front line that splits and the AI chooses to move over an ocean. Oh, another five, another three. Ah, oh. The pain is unreal. I feel the AI's pain. Here's the research right now, working on doctrines. We want more building slots, so we're going for disperse industry. Working on the strategic bomber three, more encryption decryption for spotting. Also construction for more excavation and working on our nukes. Whoa, 44 convoys. Nice. German convoys now are down to 400. Italian's gone down to seven. Vichy France, nine. Okay, so we can pretty much safely say right now we control the seas of Europe. So, we might as well just bomb Berlin, right? Meanwhile, in the Pacific, I missed this. <laughs> The game should let you know if there's a major battle going to happen. And uh, this is the outcome. Look at this guy. Look at all the medals he's got. And this guy. <laughs> what happened? I don't even know. One advisor I've forgotten about was the nuclear scientist. Now we should be able to get nukes just a tiny little bit faster. Casually looking at Vichy France, I was like, oh, one convoy. That's not good. Then I clicked on Italy and I was like... Ooh. Ooh. Let's make some super fortresses. And first thing we're going to do is give it the most agility, which will give it defense in the air. Final destination, nuclear bombs. Okay, we're struggling to spot here, and the reason why is their ships are faster. Look, this is the all the attributes that play into detection. There's so many, isn't there? Air superiority, radar coverage, encryption, decryption advantages... And to top it off, speed. All right, we've reached critical mass right now. We've got so many of these fires, we don't need them anymore. So in this case, we're going to go all strategic bombers now. The most popular question that always gets asked is, what are the casualties, Dave? Losses for Germany, 7.3 mil. Soviets have lost 5.1. My losses, 42. Isn't this pretty? This is amazing to look at. Oh my goodness, there's so many convoys getting sunk. They're even disappearing on their own as well. It's like the game knows it's going to glitch out if it gets too many. Japanese convoys, zero. Now what's going to happen now is all of their troops on land are going to get deorged. As you can see, one supply of five. So like 12, not too bad. And in the last month, we bombed 26 buildings. Last month, 202. Last year's, zero. And it is bust. Game's saying like, I think you've done enough damage. Split them off and move them here and here and here. And we'll just bomb everything. Germany is scraping the barrel with 100,000 dudes left. It's not looking good. All right, let's go. Bomb away. Are they even going to attempt to shoot us down? Oh, here we go. They've got some heavy fires. Not that many. And... Yeah, they we've reached critical mass of strategic bombers right now. And uh, they're just tickling these bombers. They're losing more fighters than we're losing bombers. <laughs> oh, damn. I feel sorry for them. This is bullying. No bully, guys. And they've given up. They have accepted their fate. They're just letting us bomb them now. Oh, wait, no. Yep. And they've arrived to get shot down. That's right. The, the bombers are shooting down the fighters. Yes. Historical game, by the way. We'll prioritize, we'll prioritize bombing of the airfields. That'll prevent them from ever getting any planes back up here anyway. Big airport. Big radar. Big poor max infrastructure. I'm gonna do a naval invasion now to Okinawa. And once again, I thought this would be the end, but Germany's holding here. Interesting. I love games of Hoi Father, unpredictable. These are the best ones. Usually I've played so many games now, there's always a predictable pattern of things happening. You see one pushback happen, you're like, oh, that's the end of that nation. This is a little bit different. Maybe things have changed in 1.7. 
Let's grab Iwo Jima. This is easy because I've got naval supremacy everywhere. All the subs are keeping hold of control. Meanwhile in Japan, look at all these red bars. I wish I could see the factory damage, but you can't see that. That's a shame. To rub it in, we're even going to build reactors on the islands adjacent to Japan. <laughs> okay, I also have another plan. We are going to try and take control of the Allies. To do this, we need to spam out a lot of divisions and convert them to the biggest ones we've got. We can make... Oh, this keeps going. Keeps going. Alright, we'll do 351. 351. And then we'll convert those to the big National Guard division. So that means we'll have lots of manpower in the field. That will let us to take control of the Allies. Right, deploy these boys. And convert them to National Guard. Need almost... Three quarters of a million guns to sustain this. So it's going to cost 200 political power. We need 5.18 million deployed manpower. So this might be just enough. I'm probably going to have to go service by requirement, maybe. Here we go. Let's do this. All the Californian air wings, 3,000 of them. We need air superiority. Go here, go here, and we just need a single bomber. All right. Boom. Team America unlocked. All right, so for me to take over the allies, I need more factories than them as well. Hmm. I could probably do that if I take land from Germany. I think we're running out of things to bomb. Boom. 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 That is a huge India. Look at that, baby. Reverse Genghis Khan. Japan is completely flattened. All the infrastructure is zero throughout the entirety of the country. Devastated. Let's try something different. I'm going to nuke the location of German forces. So I'm going to cripple this northern front. Boom. Execute nuclear strikes on Japanese soil. Drop two nukes. Let's go historical. Nagasaki. Boom. Hiroshima. Boom. And are they going to surrender? Now, my understanding was that they meant to surrender by event, but they've not. So, uh, have to pay them a visit. Time for tactical nukes. In fact, you know what? Two layers of nukes. And then counterattack. Aggressive. Go. Go! And we've completely wrecked all the terrain, but it's all good. It's all good, it's all good. Right, rip Japan. I am just gonna gobble up as much land as I can. So then I can get as many factories as possible. Alright, this is what we've got. I managed to take all of it, apart from this, which uh, the UK took it as a puppet state. We're going to annex the Philippines. And what this allows us to do, get access to all the factories they've got, because we've been building inside them for quite a long time. And now we need another 10 factories, and then we can take over the Allies. Aha! Here we go. We can, can take control of the Allies now. Boom. The Soviets collapsed, but then they've reached a point here where they've been here for like six months holding this line. So maybe what we're doing in the West is slowing them down, hopefully. Regardless, this is my final assault anyway. I've got as many fighters as I can get in northern France. Potentially we could have at least 10,000 here, maybe 20,000. But with the airport situation, it's just near impossible. So what I'm going to do is land troops here. We've got a full army group. And we're pretty much just going to go from there. If this isn't successful, then bleh, who cares? I got my achievement anyway. Here we go, boys. Ah, this is... Wow, this is going really well. Way better than I expected. We're getting just enough planes up in the air to get air superiority and keep down their planes. Alright, very good. 
This is one way of pushing back the front line. Boom. And another one, just to make sure. And again. Boom. And again. I was so close to just abandoning this and just saying, I got the achievement, let's end this video now, but we've made a break too, so yay. Yay in the comments. Alright, before it ends, Germany's lost 21 million, most of them to the Soviet Union. Soviets have lost 29 million, almost 30. And then... rip, maybe? RIP! You know what? That doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty good. I'm not the kind to go for achievement runs. They're not usually my cup of tea, but this was pretty fun. So we got a few achievements. We got Team America. We got Arsenal of Democracy. I got Mines Bigger Than Yours. And there might be a way late, late game where we might be able to get the three Georges as well. We can justify on the Soviet Union now to get this Georgia. But South Georgia Islands, we need to go to war with the UK. Do that, we need to wait for the UK to go down its focus tree and start justifying on other nations. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. It takes me and my editor a long time to make these kind of videos. So to show your appreciation, a simple like would be great. If you made it to the end of the video, say, I made it, Dave, in the comments below. And everyone who reads the comments is going to be so confused. Anyway, guys, subscribe to this video or you're going to be exiled to Chernobyl. And don't forget, if you don't hit the bell icon, your subscription means absolutely, completely, and utterly nothing. I will see you soon. Goodbye. As always, a massive shout out to the Patreons. For as little as $5 a month, you get access to the feedbacker chat and the early access chat on my Discord. We could talk to other feedbackers about upcoming content and get access to my videos before everyone else. The link is in the description below.